Hi, welcome to Talking Travel with Wendy. This morning I have Luisana or Lou Colmenares. She is the podcaster for The Solo Female Traveler. And I'm so excited to chat with her today uh, because we're going to talk about her many travels and uh, 22 countries you said you have yeah. visited. It's so awesome. Which, what's, 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 uh, tell us a little bit about, um, how you got into podcasting and traveling and. Yeah, of course. So yeah, it's been 22 countries in the last three years. And first how I got into traveling was that I have always been very curious since I was a kid. Like I will always go out and explore. Like my friends always call me Dora the Explorer. Um, so yeah, so one day I remember um, back in 2016, I was married and I had this idea of, oh no, I, I can't travel because I need to go with my husband everywhere. And what if he can't come? And like, but I really want to go out and explore. So he was okay with it. So what I did is that I bought my my a ticket to Colombia. Once I took the decision, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go to Colombia. I left like a month after. And it, it was amazing. I was like, Colombia was my first uh, country traveling solo. I, dis I, I picked that country because I am from Venezuela, so it was the most similar. And it was amazing. I just fell in love with that, just like being on my own, being independent, um, meeting all these new people all the time, trying new foods, um, and then like not, not having a plan, just like going with the flow. And then after that, I kind of like became addicted. So <laughs> I like start like every time I was still working, but okay. I would take long breaks. So every time I had the chance to take those long breaks, I would just like go anywhere. Um, now, did you use so, um, Airbnb or hostels or um, hotels? How did you stay? I, 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 so I am. Since I like to do it so much and it's not affordable most of the time. So what I do is I stay at hostels or I just couch surfing. I don't know if you know oh. about couch surfing. No, tell me about it. <laughs> so okay. So couch surfing is this website where you kinda of like you trade um, how do you say where the host at a specific place um, they they offer free accommodation. Oh. So let's say, yeah, so let's say here in my house, in my apartment, I have an extra bedroom or a couch, and I'm like, you know what, I like to meet some new people that's traveling, so I, I just, in this website, I just offer a couch, and then they stay for free, and it's like, I guess it's an exchange of, you know, like, hey, hanging out with travelers, and then the travelers have a... That's so cool. I didn't even know that existed. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And and then yeah, but of course it's not like everything is, you know, unicorns and flowers. You know you need to know how to read the profiles and and, and like communicate with the host and kinda like be aware that hey, you know, you are still staying at a stranger's house. Yeah. So Well I um I've had a couple Airbnbs that are like that too. And that I, I even try to tell my travelers, you know, you really need to read the reviews and especially the the current ones like what's happening lately and uh see if they're verified and don't just uh especially i when we were traveling in the uk and london um they were definitely didn't you know live up to their description <laughs> it, was, it was challenging i remember my kids one time were in London and um, they showed up and their Airbnb did not have a door on the apartment. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that was that was a little odd. <laughs> they didn't have a door. <laughs> they didn't have a door. <laughs> wow. So they got a, they got a door because I called, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, I, I was meaning to do that. And I'm like, I've already paid for that <laughs> flat for 
uh, yeah, my kids were about 19, 20 at the time, going to London on their own. And, and uh, you know, they wanted to stay in uh, this young, hip area. So I was like, yeah, okay, this looks good. And, yeah, so you just have to, you know, uh, buyer beware, mindful. Yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, I think it's very important always to read the reviews. Of either, even if you're staying at a hotel or like a hostel, Airbnb, and always read the reviews and instructions. That's yeah. like the most important lesson I have learned in my life. <laughs> So what has what has there um, what has been your favorite country so far? Okay, so I have been in a couple of countries here in, in the South of America, um, from Mexico. Um, then I have been in Asia and Europe. So I have kind of like a like a, a favorite one from each continent, and I just gotta say like. This might sound cheesy, like, oh, like, oh, yeah, every country is special. But, yeah, like, every country, you know, like, they, they I had different experiences over there. But I will say, um, if I have to pick only one, I will say probably Vietnam. Oh, wow. But, okay. Yeah. Haven't <laughs> been yet. It's on the list. <laughs> I highly recommend it. It's, is very it's becoming very popular right now because it's so cheap so but then it's like they they are getting a lot of tourism but kind of like they're not that prepared for it so many people don't really speak english and kind of like their facilities are still kind of underdeveloped so you can you go there and you get a you get a a really good understanding of the culture and then and then you get, you are so out of your comfort zone because then you're like riding scooters in Asia and then no one around you speaks English. So it's like you kind of like have to figure it out. Like, okay, I'm going to use the translator in my phone or I'm going to do signs or, yeah. you know, and then, <clears throat> and then they love Western. So they will try to make you feel very special, like help you. Like, like, yeah. That's Even awesome. Like, yeah. Well, now, now I gotta, I gotta plan a trip. So, do you have, a, do you have a favorite um, uh, on every continent, maybe? Yeah. So, so yeah, I would say that that was my favorite one from Southeast Asia. Okay. Um, then, of course, like Indonesia was very special as well. Um, but then I will say, in Europe, I mean Spain. I love Spain yeah. so much because yeah. of the food. Yeah. I, that I, I, I was there last year. I was just like, I just stayed in Madrid because I, I don't know if that was smart. But where, did you, like, where did you go last year in Spain? Um, I was just in Madrid. <laughs> well, but, we went to Costa Brava last year, um, uh, just north in Catalonia, in Catalon. Yeah. Um, the food was unbelievable. Just the spices and the combinations and then the people were great too and it's right there on the like french border too so it has like a little french flair and then it gets so many mainland uh europeans in there too so it still had quite a bit of tourism but i didn't feel like it was as inundated as like barcelona oh okay yeah, yeah. so wow, okay. spain is no, definitely I... huh? spain yeah no, seriously, I, I, I also, when I was a teenager, I lived in the in one of the Canary Islands, and I I got to go by it. They, they're amazing. Yeah. Like these volcanic islands. And, yeah. And like closer to Africa than to uh, Spain, mainland, so. Well, and they seem to always fun. have, like, amazing weather in um, in the Canary Islands. You know, does it, it, it seems to be where... Uh, my German friends definitely wanted to. That's where we're gonna go to get some sun and some vitamin D, you know, to, to, uh, to yeah, to just warm up <laughs> from winter. But. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Actually, yeah, they say that they have like an eternal spring. Yeah. So, um, so it's always a spring. So I know, yeah, it's Spain. Like, it's just, if if you if you're a foodie, if you like to eat, like Spain is the place to go. Yeah. And I know you have, you have been to Portugal as well. I haven't been, but I heard that the food 
it's amazing as well. Oh, it is. And it's like never ending. And, um, but in a good way, it's like all fresh and uh, the markets are every day uh, within walking distance of where we stayed. We stayed in um, right outside of uh, Porto in a town called Matasinos. And um, it's kind of a beach town. And um, we, we walked out of our apartment and there was this big open air um, market. And it seemed like every morning. And they had just, you know, fresh fruit and vegetables and, and the meat was fresh and the fish was fresh. And yeah, so um, loved, loved Portugal. Yeah. Oh, I, I definitely got to go. It's like the more you travel, the more places you, you hear about. Yeah. And like more, more recommendations you get. And it's like, oh, I just did like 10 years yeah. uh, without working and like <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. That's my goal, too. <laughs> oh, okay. We're at the same page. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then, like, well, that about Europe, but of course, like, um, every place, like, Belgium also, I really like Belgium as well. Like, I, I love their beer, oh, yeah. their chocolate, their, their food as well. <laughs> and, and then in, in South America, like, Mexico, mm. it's, it's amazing, like, it's, it, it's a large country, so it's like when you, when the things that you find in the south are completely different to the things you will see in the north, like the north is more the desert, but then in the south you have like more jungle and you have the cenotes, I don't know if you know what the cenotes are. No. The cenotes are like these, how do I explain that? It's like these under, it's like these this beach but it's like under under rocks or like and, a cave huh? like a cave it's like a cave yeah but with with water inside okay and um and then the, the water is very is clear and it's just one of the things that i don't know how to swim it's like you have to see a picture of, of you have to go over there it's just like yeah, but, but like a cave with water, so you it's like a um, a swimming hole, but under under the know, under a cave. Uh, I it's, will send you a picture. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we can we can post it up when you send me the picture yeah. of of uh, yeah. of some of the shots you got. That would be yeah, really yeah. cool. So, but yeah, and then you can go see the uh, the Mayan ruins in the south as well. Um, they're called Chichen Itza. But then also there is like, um, like on the on the west of Mexico, they they have um, in the Pacific side of Mexico they have seasons for whale sharks, for humpback whales. So you can yeah. go see dolphins all the time. So it's like everywhere you go is so different, and it's, and it's a, just every place is amazing. It's, um... it's like oh yeah, like you know the east, the, the west is better than the east. It's like no. Places are amazing. Are amazing. So, That's I really sweet. like <laughs> Well, awesome. So, um, what uh, upcoming adventures do you have? Upcoming trips? Okay. So, yeah, um, this year, I want, since I've been so focused on other projects, um, I'm just going to take it easy and um, go to Canada. Um, I'm going to go to Canada uh, in the spring. And then and then I will be doing some traveling around the States, um, but, but that's about it. Like this year, I'm like, okay, I'm, I really need to focus on other things. Like I, 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 like, I, I want to really, you know, uh, work on, on, on like projects this next year so then I can have more time to do so. Sure. So travel. Sure. Yeah, definitely. I have had, uh, some years that have been super heavy with travel like it seems like every week I've got something planned and um, this year it's more methodical like every quarter I have something going on but uh, but it's not like continuous but I'm actually okay with that because I'm, I'm doing a lot more writing 
and I like writing too so uh, so I get that and I, I feel like we can save a little money while I'm writing uh, so that we can do the bigger ones we have a plan to go to New Zealand next February so that's not a inexpensive one because you got to get across the world <laughs> Yeah, New Zealand, yeah, New Zealand, I yeah, heard, yeah. is beautiful, yeah. but yeah, it's just good. Have, so, you, yeah, well, yeah. have you been to New Zealand? I have not. Yeah. Uh, Australia and New Zealand are in my in my plans, uh, but first, before going there, as you said about saving, I'm, I'm saving to go to, to Brazil, um, so probably next year, probably in this after in the in the in the fall. Yeah. So because I'm like I I really I really want to learn another language. So it's like two is not not enough. So I really want to look into learn Portuguese and French. Okay. So so how do you create your itineraries? Once you've chosen a destination and you're like, okay, this is where I'm gonna go. How do you get it to all come together? I don't think you you would like my answer. No. Go I ahead. Never, you don't. You don't, you don't plan an itinerary. I never, I never plan. Um, but actually, like, the, the older I get, the more I plan. But, like, for example, let's say when I went to Asia, I went to Asia for two months, and I just decided a month before I found a, 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 a ticket to Vietnam, from, from Los Angeles to Vietnam for $400. So I was like, wow, I'm just going to go to Vietnam. Then I got there, and I was like, uh, I know, I'm just going to do whatever. And then, and then I was just like, yeah, around the country, just like meeting people. And like, they were like, hey, do you want to join us? I was like, yeah, sure. So it's like kind of like just following other people's plans. Like, oh, they already did all the work. of Yeah, like, yeah. I'll just tag on. You know, yeah. Stuff. Well, that's. Well, and then, yeah. So well, that makes it really um, easy to relax and enjoy. Um, I because I organize, I used to organize these group trips. You know, people have expectations, so I would have a very kind of full uh, itinerary to make sure that we hit certain spots. But the more I um, I travel solo on my own or with my even with my husband, we usually pick out, like, I have this rule of three. We don't do anything more than three in a day. And that one of them can be that we just found like the best cupcakery in the area or um, it has a large Van Gogh um, display in the middle of a field or something. The thing that I realized about planning nothing was that sometimes I would be next to something that was really fantastic and if I didn't Google at all or, <laughs> or didn't do, I'd be like, Oh my gosh, that museum, the Picasso Museum was two blocks from my place in Paris and I didn't go. And so I was getting mad at myself that I didn't do any of it. So now I would say that I kind of have a little bit of both. We're going to Memphis um, in a couple weeks for um, Valentine's Day. And my husband said last night, did you do any research on where we're going to go? And I said, well, I know we're going to Graceland, but I don't really want to plan anything else. I just want to see where Memphis takes us. So. <laughs> yeah, definitely it has its ups and downs. Um, it has happened to me, especially in Singapore. Like, I went to Singapore and I just went to one of two places. And then after I left, I found out about like, all these other amazing places that I didn't even know that existed. I'm like, where are the odds that I'll go back to Singapore and yeah, see these yeah. places? Like, why didn't I plan it and do it? So, definitely, yes. And I, like, seriously, I am almost well, I'm 28, so I will be 32 years. So, but I noticed that the older I get, the more I want to plan, the more, um, you know, the more, I don't want to be more, so, so, like, going with the flow. It's like, no, like, I, I want I want to a place, I want to learn a specific thing, I want to... Uh, I spend um, X amount of money because, like, now also I get to appreciate uh, accommodation more. It's mm -hmm. like before I didn't, you know, I didn't mind sleeping under a tree. But now I'm like, no, I really want, like, a room. And <laughs> yeah, and it, I mean, it doesn't even have to be um, fancy schmancy, but this, this woman I met last year when I was in Austria, uh, she had been traveling for 40 years. She was in her mid-60s, and she's been traveling forever. And she only stays at hostels. 
And so she said the people and the amazing stories that she's had, uh, that where she shared a bunk room, and it, it's basically, you know, a lot of the places she stayed are just a bunk bed and, and a locker, and you have a shared bathroom. But she said our, the place that we stayed was about $35 a night per person, but that included your breakfast. And that is on kind of the high end for hostels. A lot of hostels are about, you know, 15 to 20, 22 euros or dollars a night um so she said this is like one of the most expensive places i've stayed at <laughs> and you know she's been traveling for 30 35 years or whatever and so i mean it can be done uh you can you can stay one of the nicest hotels in berlin is a hostel and it's made for families and for singles and it's it's separated kind of like the party young people and the families and they have amazing uh, accommodations and they're you know 20 bucks a night or 20 euros a night so you're not in your hotel that uh, that long right. you know while you're going so um it, 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 of course it depends on your preference what you want um if you're on a budget i mean if you're travel, if you plan to travel like without indefinitely for four years it's like you need to be on a budget for sure yeah. so yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I guess like stay at hotels if it works for her. Um, yeah. and, like what well, works for any, anyone, just like just know that if you're gonna set out a hotel you gotta give up privacy. Yes. So yes. because you're gonna be sharing the room with I don't know, eight, six, even I have been in a set of hotels where I had to share the room with twenty five people <sighs> and then two, two two bathrooms. It was it was quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> So tell me about your podcast, Lou. What yeah, of course. So I don't talk about my podcast. It's like I was like, I wanna do, I want to do something to get out of my comfort zone. And so I was like, what do I like? I like to travel. What do I also like? I like to talk. So I'm like, okay. So podcasting is a, it's an, it's an easy way just to start any project. Like you can, it's, you know, you can start your podcast with less than a hundred dollars the only thing you need is a computer and a microphone and then editing skills so i i basically i just start um where, when did i launch it in october and then i feel like yeah i'm just gonna share my experience because i hear a lot of comments like oh my god you're so brave that you travel alone or, or like hey i'm gonna be traveling here so what do you recommend so it's like you know what i'm just gonna record some episodes and and then when people ask me or anything, they can listen to it, or or then you know people can listen to it randomly. So well, I love it so because you, they could listen to you and say, well, you know what? If she can do it, so can I. And it motivates and inspires people to step out of their comfort zone and say, yeah, I think I could do this. Definitely. So yeah, that was the that was the main reason why. So. So yeah, I so it's, it's a work in progress. I'm um, so I I have about uh, seventeen episodes, and, and and then yeah, I have almost two thousand downloads. So I'm like, cool, like you know, people are listening to it. I know. Yeah. They're like, wow, I wasn't even expecting ten people to listen to it, but um, and then but it's been a work in progress. Like my first episode, so I, I didn't know how to edit. I didn't have the right microphone. I was so shy. They're like, oh, I don't know what to talk about. And then it's, I have it in Spanish and English. Then my English part was like, just me like, kind of like. Uh, oh, I think I think you speak. I think you speak great podcast. English. Yeah, you speak. Uh, you speak better English than some Americans I know. <laughs> I, I knew that my English was pretty bad when I was taking German in Germany and the Germans were correcting my English and they said that's actually not how you say that oh, wow. so, you know that happens when you're learning a new language it's like there is a point where you you know you don't speak like you don't speak well in either one yeah. like, my word for the year was supposed to be patience but I'm not very patient <laughs> that's something I'm working on right now. Wow, that's well. Wow, so much in common. I know. I love it. I love it. 
Well, we're gonna we're gonna do this again um, because you are such a joy, and I want to stay in touch because of um, just what you're doing and where you're going, and your spirit is awesome. So, um, thank you so much for joining me here today, Lou. And I look forward to our next episode as we talk about yeah, travels yeah, and experiences. Please, please. So, yeah. Um, so, as you mentioned at the beginning of the show, my podcast is called oh, yeah. the Salt Travel Podcast. Um, you can find it on Spotify, YouTube, and then on, online. And then you can also find all the links to it on my Instagram. So, I'll, in, I'll include them too, as well. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So it's Blue Pomeranian Sports. And and and, well, and thank you so much. what do you what do you chat about on the podcast? So as I said, it's it's been a work in progress. The first episodes have been about my experience, like oh, like tips when packing, or um, you know, like when you are backpacking, you know, yeah. and then like tips to stay safe, cow surfing, and then right now. Since I've been doing one episode per country, I've been kind of like sharing about my oh, good. and the culture and some uh, data. So it's been like kind of like I don't have it's, so, it's traveling, but I don't have like a specific thing. No, but so that's like, good. Yeah, somebody can do a search on Singapore and then they can pull up your podcast and say, okay, she's got some intel about going to Singapore and uh, let me go ahead and listen. And that's the one thing I've been finding out about the podcast community is you can pretty much search every subject and you can find a podcast where somebody's talking about it and you can listen to it on your way to work or the market or, <laughs> or wherever. Yep. So, well, thank you for joining Talking Travel with Wendy. And we look forward to having Lou on again to um, chat about some new travel adventures. Okay. Thank you so much, Wendy. Thanks.